The year is 1991, a video game mascot that would rival the likes of Mario released to the world. A speedy blue hedgehog on the Sega Genesis who captured the heart of millions with his amazing gameplay and cool attitude. He would go on to be the face of one of the biggest video game franchises of all time, and his name is Sonic the Hedgehog. You think when they created him, they expected him to turn into this? Sonic, just like Mario or Pokemon, is a game series so popular that it just greatly transcends official media. We're talking millions of YouTube videos, fan art, and of course, fan games. Now, if you talk Sonic games online, chances are that fan games will be brought up eventually. Fan games are actually a very important part of Sonic's history, most notably with the release of Sonic Mania. Most of the development team for that game was actually comprised of members known for working on fan games, such as the programmer Christian Whitehead, who started off with fan games before being hired by Sega to work for them. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at here is that fan creations play a huge part in Sonic's identity. Hell, I've been keeping up with Sonic fan games for almost a decade at this point, and another huge part of the Sonic fan game community is without a doubt the horror scene. And I'm not talking about Sonic Omens, am I right, guys? I, I don't know if that's a thing people still know about. Now, horror has been uh, sort of present in Sonic games before. I mean, there's creepy elements from Sonic CD and there's Pumpkin Hill Zone, but that's really about it. Sonic is a fairly squeaky clean franchise when it comes to that stuff, but as soon as you get into fan creations, shit hits the fan fast. So you really can't talk about Sonic horror games without talking about the patient zero itself, Sonic EXE. For those of you lucky enough to not know, Sonic.exe is a creepypasta about a kid getting a spooky copy of Sonic 1 in the mail and playing it. Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman all die in the game, blah blah blah, there's a wish.com, Sonic plush on the bed, the end. The the story blew up massively in the 2010s, a game was made to accompany it, it fell off, it fell back on, the writer turned out to be a massive weirdo, and here we are 10 years later from the original game's release. I could talk exclusively about the history of this bloody hedgehog for an entire video, but for my own sanity, I won't. What I will be doing, however, is taking a look at a handful of Sonic horror games I thought were intriguing and seeing how they hold up. I chose five that I'll be discussing in length, and I'll be giving a couple others some honorable mentions towards the end. There's just so many of these games I want to talk about, but I don't have the time to do so, and I want to have enough to discuss the games I found interesting. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a sequel to this in the future. Now, I will admit, like 99% of Sonic horror games are just EXE games, which means they sort of follow the same format, but I tried my absolute best to get some variety here. And I'm sticking strictly to horror games, nothing creepy like Sonic Dreams Collection where uh, Rouge gives birth. Let's forget about that and just talk about some bloody hedgehogs, shall we? So first on the list, I'm going to talk about a fairly well-known one, simply called Sonic PC Port, made by John Kun. Well, actually, it's a remake of the original PC Port game by Joe Doughboy, which was a reimagining of the Sonic EXE character that honestly helped the character begin to regain relevancy again. Also, this game was a submission for the YouTuber Luigi Kid's Creepypasta Game Challenge, which you'll be hearing a lot about that challenge throughout this video. Okay, I can't actually find where I heard this was for the creepypasta challenge, but just in case it wasn't, I wanted to include this. Anyways, keep the challenge in mind anyways, because it will come up again in this video. Thank you. Anyways, on to the PC port remake we'll actually be talking about, which is sadly just a demo at this moment, but a pretty good one at that. Let's dive right into it, shall we? Booting up the game leads to a quick introduction of the game's creators, controls, and all that fun stuff, all while Tails is about to get a visit from the giant red tickle monster lurking behind him. Right away, I love the sprite art in this game. Similar to what I said in my Mario Horror Games video, these creepypasta game devs know how to make damn good sprite art, regardless of the game's quality. Anyways, after that, intro it's time for the good old green hill zone i can't wait that's probably not good so as stated in the intro this is indeed a game that utilizes fourth wall breaking elements as do a lot of other games on this list now i'm a fan of fourth wall breaks in horror games no doubt but when a game cheaply relies on them to carry the game's scary factor they lose their magic very quick this demo however utilizes the fourth wall very well you'll see some more soon you play as tails poor guy goes through so much in these exe games and you walk past a bunch of animal and robot corpses before hitting a different biome or something green hills looking a bit 
scary, dare I'd say. The plants have teeth and eyeballs, there's corpses in the trees, and the sky is the worst color. Orange, no! Anyways, you run into your good old pal Sonic, who jogs your memory a bit and sends you to the iconic Burning Angel Island Zone. I just realized if you've never played or heard of Sonic EXE, you've got no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm just rolling with the idea that you do. If you've never seen the original Sonic EXE game before, go watch Markiplier play it, I don't know. Now in this burning zone, you're on the run from Sonic, as the scenery becomes more vile and fleshy, now including plants made of arms and teeth. After flying over a giant pit to escape Sonic, this tree eats your tails. What a piece of shit! Get this guy on the worst villains list of all time, asshole. Anyways, tails trip, scary music plays as Sonic's about to get you, and he just zooms right past you. Huh, I guess he was feeling merciful this time. What a kind soul. I'll just take my leave now. You know, he's still not as evil as the tree. Sonic gets to you, opens wide, and the game seems to crash. Booting it up again reveals the original Sonic title screen, except Sonic needs some toothpaste or something. <laughs> Alright, never mind, I don't think toothpaste can fix that. After this, the game glitches a ton and takes you to this fake anti-piracy screen. A text file is then placed in the folder where the game is at, which after opening the file, it will close immediately. The anti-piracy screen will then remind you how rude it is to look at stuff while talking to him. Do this a couple more times and he gets pissed and just leaves altogether. Together. And that was the end of Sonic PC port. I'm not joking, he's just so mad you can't reopen the game. I can see why this helped rejuvenate interest in the character. It was a new take on the iconic blood fest that was the original game. While OCs and stuff have existed in the past, this iteration, also known as Lord X, was something new and also pretty yeah. sick. Also, it didn't hurt that there was a super popular Friday Night Funkin' mod that came out a little while after, but we don't talk about FNF here. I'll give this game 7 yeah. iced out Eggman necklaces out of 10. Enough talk about Sonic EXE. Let's talk about Sonic EXE. Sonic.UIX, created by Cloudy Jolt and Kawa16, is another reimagining of Sonic EXE, but this time it's a different format compared to the last one. Where Sonic PC port tried to give a remake on the original game, kind of following the same events, this one just kind of goes batch crazy with what happens. You'll see what I mean pretty soon. Also, a fun fact Markiplier actually played this game not that long ago. It's actually pretty crazy seeing him cover an EXE game, let alone in the year 2022. Let's hop right into it, and opening the game, it is not messing around. It gets right into the scary stuff, immediately telling you to turn off the game and stop playing. Of course, I can't follow basic instructions, so off we go to play some scary Sonic. Oh yeah, add another Luigi Kid creepypasta challenge to the counter, by the way. The first level seems pretty normal, it's just Tails running about in classic Green Hill Zone, and obviously he's about to die in the most horrific possible way. Tails isn't allowed to just walk through Green Hill Zone in these games, something has to happen to him. Running to the right, you run into Sonic, and in which you have to backtrack to the very beginning of the level. After a few scary jump scares and a very ominous message from our pal Sonic, we get frozen and the game pretends to crash. The game then opens up with Knuckles. What's going on, man? Oh, alright then. So Knuckles talks about how you're like, torturing them or something, and that we deserve to die. I didn't do jack shit, but alright, whatever you say. He then begins to shake and move around your window, introducing some fourth wall breaking elements into the game. Once again, EXE games love to break the fourth wall. After Knuckles tries to break into my internet connection, the game crashes, and now you're met with a completely different art style. It's pretty cool. Ignore that though, because we gotta watch Ray the Flying Squirrel run a bit. Some more scary jump scares occur, and Ray is chased down by Sonic, and uh, killed? Not sure how it happens, but it happens. Anyways, that was weird. Back to that new art style I mentioned. You now have to play through this brand new Sonic level, which is actually super well made. Like, if this was its own game, it would be really amazing. I love the new Sonic sprite here. How his spin dash, like, curves in when you charge it, it's just amazing. But you're not here to see gameplay. You're here to watch Sonic die. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Sonic is then thrusted into a horrifying chase scene where the evil Sonic grabs its way towards you. Don't get caught though, because then you have to replay through the last level and Sonic has to take a bath again. 
Anyways, once you outrun the evil Sonic, the other Sonic you're playing as just kind of gets stuck. Then the window of the game starts to talk to you through the title, calling us family? No time to process it though, because the window starts dancing and trying to access your webcam. If I gave them access to that, I'd probably end up in one of these games. A couple more little dances across your desktop and the game is forced into full screen mode where you run in this dark foresty area. Oh yeah, you played this game completely in windowed mode for most of it, by the way. Anyways, you hit the end, Sonic jumps down from the screen, does a silly little jump scare and you're back to normal. You finally complete the first level of Crystal Lake Zone and once you get into the next one, Sonic stops for a minute to see what's ahead of him. Unfortunately, Dr. Eggman goes on the attack. Oh boy, a boss fight. Whatever will Sonic do to beat him? Okay, you know what? That's one way. After watching Eggman get impaled, the game crashes once more and you're left to play as Tails now. After you walk around for a bit, you run into that Sonic monster again, which uh, just doesn't end well for Tails. And with Tails once again bodied, the game ends, thanking you for playing. Erase the data? Sure, maybe I can convince my dad to play this or something. Now, I did enjoy this game a lot, probably more than Sonic PC port, but I mean, that's not entirely fair because PC port is technically still a demo at the moment. Anyways, this game is honestly one of, if not the best EXE games I have ever played, and I'm not joking. The artwork is both amazing and horrifying without leaning too much into excessive blood and guts flying everywhere, and knows how to balance it properly. The meta horror elements are done well, it has some actual platforming and not just walking to the right, and the jump scares, well, they're still jump scares, but I mean, I've seen worse. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. It's a shame the original programmer stepped down and it seems we'll have to wait a minute for another update on this. Eight iced out Eggmans out of 10. Let's take a short break from talking about the Sonic character and delve into a different character who also has their own horror game. That's right, we're talking about Chow from Sonic Adventure 2. What, are you surprised that this little blue guy has his own horror game? How could he not? So what exactly is a Chow? They're these little pet creature thingies that originated in the Sonic Adventure games. Now, I've actually never really used the Chows before in Sonic, I just like playing City Escape over and over again as a kid. So my first experience with the Chow Garden will be none other than the ChowGarden.exe game, and surely it'll be a great experience. The game opens up at another point to that Luigi Kid counter, and we could start right away. You've got a little egg that'll eventually hatch into a chow, and the game turns into a very basic pet simulator. Feed the pet to raise its stats, ask what the pet wants, play mini games to buy food, all the works. This one wants you to get them a trumpet, and to do that, you have to play this rock, paper, scissors mini game. Now, I'm completely brain dead and had zero clue at first what to do, but you just shoot up the various rock, paper, scissor hands and uh, play rock, paper, scissors. Not sure how I didn't get that. Now, the first time around, I played for so long and spent so much money that when I finally had enough for the trumpet, my chow was just straight up gone. I don't know if I like broke the game or maybe I was just a horrible parent, but he was gone so I had to restart and go through the entire rock paper scissors gauntlet once more. Once you finally buy the trumpet, the game crashes right before you can give it to your chow. Booting the game up again restarts all of your progress and you have to go through the chow process once again. I'm just kidding, this silly guy pops up and he appears to be your old chow and he tells you not to give your new one the trumpet. I'm not even gonna lie, I actually listened to him at first, but as you play through the game without buying the trumpet, it just kinda messes with you a bunch. He claims I was ignoring his request when I wasn't, he flickers in and out of existence, text files pop up with ominous messages, my cursor gets flung all over the place, all things that eventually just made me want to buy the trumpet purely out of spite. Unfortunately, right before I could do that, the evil Chow just decided to chase down and kill the one I had now, claiming that you replaced him. Honestly, I didn't do anything to deserve this, the game crashed, this is not my fault. I could take this to court if I wanted to. After your Chow dies, you're left to talk with the evil one and also Sonic EXE is in the background for some reason. He monologues about how he's finally taking your chow away and he can be free, actually shaking your window, possibly trying to break out. He then says that you're going to be taking his place, name drops you, and then grabbing you through the screen. This leaves you with the bad ending? Oh hell no. I'm not playing rock, paper, scissors for another half hour to try and get the good ending. Apparently there's a whole lore aspect to this game, but I'm just going to take it at face value as scary Why blue guy blue? wants a trumpet. And that 
that was Chow Garden.exe. Not bad, especially for an exe game. There was a lot more to do than the typical walking to the right that a lot of other games normally employ, but this game just wasn't scary at all. I know, grown ass man isn't scared by bloody Sonic game. It's crazy. The art for this game is also fairly bare bones, and while not every game has to be a renaissance painting level of amazing, I would at least want it to look nice. I give this game a solid 4 iced out Eggmans out of 10. Not amazing, but not terrible. While we're still on the topic of games that don't center around Sonic, why don't we talk about a game where it centers around his best friend instead, Tails. Now you still play as Sonic in this game, but just don't worry about that. Friendship, a Sonic 2 creepypasta is a game developed by Not So Davy, who's actually done quite a few creepypasta games in the past. Definitely go check out their work. Now, this is not a Sonic EXE game, which is part of the reason I chose it. Not saying that all Sonic EXE games are bad, far from it, but there's just so many of them. And it's nice playing a Sonic horror game that isn't based on the bloody blue bastard. This is actually based on the bad ending of the Sonic 2 Game Gear remake, where if you don't get all the Chaos Emeralds, it's pretty much spelled out for you that Tails is dead. There's actually a couple of creepypasta games already based on this ending, such as the infamous Sonic2.exe, but that is strictly the reason I chose this game, because it doesn't end in EXE. Opening up the game, besides the settings and the dev logos, the normal Sonic 2 startup plays, except that Tails' name is a bit messed up, and also Tails is just straight up gone. I'm sure he's just on vacation or something. You go through Emerald Hill Zone 2 like normal, nothing strange, and then go through Chemical Plant Zone, my personal favorite. However, where you're supposed to enter a tube, there's a block. Now, I'll be real, I got stuck here for a bit, but what you're supposed to do is spin dash up this ramp and time your jump perfectly so you can go up onto this floor. Just ignore the fact that I had to look up a walkthrough to find this out. Moving to the right, it shows that Tails already got to the end of this level, as foreshadowed earlier with the boxes already being destroyed. Entering the ring at the end brings you to the death egg zone, and the zone rightfully earns its name because when you walk a bit to the right, Tails is murdered on the ground. Sonic is in shock and cries at the sight of his friend murdered, and of course Eggman walks in and starts laughing. It's toxic, but it's hilarious. Before Sonic could do anything, Eggman blows up the death egg, and a cutscene from the original Sonic 2 plays. Sonic is then left falling through the sky as the cheering music playing fades out, Tails' is, well, Tails start falling with Sonic, as the game fades to black. A new level then starts with you playing what seems to be a ghost Sonic. No enemies can hit you, you can't pick anything up, you just run through Emerald Hill Zone again. Also, I got stuck in a wall at some point and had to start the game from scratch. I told you, I broke these games a lot. When you hit the end of the level, you're met with Eggman flying down and laughing at you, leading you into the normal ending, where Tails is dead, you're probably dead, and Eggman wins. Honestly, as a Robotnik fanboy, I'm okay with this. As you might have been able to tell, there's other endings, specifically two. If you go to the left in Chemical Plant Zone instead of the right where you get towards the end of the level, you could pick up this Dark Chaos Emerald. Doing this doesn't change much until you get to the end of the game. When you're falling a Sonic, instead of dying like normal, you transform into Dark Sonic, which is a real transformation from the show Sonic X, which results from fake Chaos Emeralds and a lot of anger. You then have to fight Eggman in a boss fight, where you have to maintain your rings and also try to get past his barrier of spike balls at the same time. If you lose, you get the terrible ending, where Sonic is actually dead and Eggman wins once again. If you beat him, you get the savior ending, which has everybody be dead, but you avenged Tails. Not sure why it's called the savior ending, but I'll take it. And that's the end of Friendship. Now, I'll be honest, that wasn't scary at all, and I don't think it was trying to be. This was supposed to be more of an off-putting experience than anything, watching Sonic mourn his dead friend and also that whole ghost segment, but it focuses more on the story, even if it is a more simple one, and I appreciate that. Not every Sonic creepypasta game has to be a complete blood murder kill fest. Gameplay was good, I mean it was mostly just Sonic 2, the story was solid, and it was a nice short experience. 6 iced out Eggmans out of 10. On to the last game, we're gonna move back to Sonic.exe for this one, and this one is definitely more unique than the other ones. Sega and Sonic Bootleg Collection. Now, if you're a fan of bootleg video games, you are in for a real treat. A pretty cool idea for a creepypasta game, Sega and Sonic Bootleg Collection, made by No Stud Entertainment, is an EXE game that pretends to be a collection of bootleg Sonic games. Now, if you were on the internet in the mid to late 2010s, bootleg games, mostly for 8-bit and 16-bit consoles, were fairly big with channels like Varg Skeletor, one of my favorite creators of all time, and JonTron talking about them. It's pretty cool to see them revisited in modern times, regardless of how this game is quality-wise. Also, add another point to the Luigi Kid Creepypasta Challenge counter. 
The game opens up with a basic title screen and a game selection screen. Unfortunately, there are not 400 games like advertised, but only three. You'll have to play them from the top down though. The first game is an 8-bit Sonic the Hedgehog recreation, which starts off as normal. The game controls are horrible. They're bouncy and way too fast, but that's the charm of this game. It mimics that terrible quality of bootleg games, and I love it. Once you hit that second stage, the game pretends to crash, and once it restarts, the music and enemies disappear, and you can't pick up any rings. Also, once you finish the game, there's another Sonic at the end of the stage. I'm sure it's nothing, though. The game restarts again, and although I already gave a flashing lights warning at the beginning, prepare for another one, because now the game is flashing rainbow fast scrolling text. I'll still slow it down, but it was quite a sight to see. Then, all of a sudden, everything is back to normal, and you're in an Eggman fight. Don't actually try to fight him, though, because you just crash the second you try to hit him, and you're left on an anti-piracy screen. Oh man, I'm sorry, Sonic. I'll never do it again. Okay, I'm serious, I'll never do it again, I promise, I promise. On to the next game, So Mari, which is a real bootleg game that existed that had Mario going through the world of Sonic. Also, this image flashes on screen when you click start, no clue who that fine gentleman was. For this part, you're going through Spring Yard Zone, and after getting stuck on this ramp because it's not actually a ramp and restarting the entire game, I made it to a part where you run into Sonic. He ponders why he's still there and how long it's been. After Samari has passed away, you go to the next level, where there are silhouettes of enemies and something appears to be following you. Turns out my hunch was correct as this uh, dabbing red Sonic gives you a bit of a spook. Then comes my least favorite part of the game, this chase scene where you have to run away from the fast evil Sonic. He zooms in from the left of the screen and you just have to run away. You can beat him, but I just didn't. If you get caught, you're sent to this eerie white world, but you can retry as much times as you want by going to the left. Now, I tried for like 20 minutes to beat him and eventually I just gave up and went to the right after dying for like the zillionth time. Running to the right has that red hedgehog chasing you to the end, presenting you with a picture of Mario after being caught, which just turns into this lovely portrait of the Italian plumber. Last up on the list is Tails' Musical Odyssey. This game is a very basic music game where you match the color on the screen to one of the four keys on the ground, basically DDR but with no music. You have to get a certain score to win and since there's no penalties for wrong notes, I just spammed all the keys as fast as I could to get to the end of the levels. In between levels, ominous messages are shown, and the score to beat the level increases. The third and last level is freaking out with both the music and the graphics, and no matter your score, you will lose. Tails looks into the camera, and you get put into another level, which is just a bunch of questions asked to you. Am I scared? Uh, not really. Do you scare me? Not particularly. Do I hate you? Well, I feel like I don't know you well enough to jump to conclusions here. Do I think you can hurt me? <laughs> Shit, man, I don't know what's possible. You could send 5 million volts of electricity through my mouse right now. After that fun questionnaire, you're informed of a story. There was a programmer named Edgar Sneedcliffe who worked for Sega. Apparently, his co-workers were just jerks, and he was the one left to clean up the messes. Also, he notes that he found a baby fox on the street. Remember this for later. After explaining that one day he brought what is assumed to be the baby fox into work, somebody looked at it weirdly. It is then assumed that this man snuck into the house of the programmer and murdered the baby fox for a some reason. After hearing the end of the story, you play as Tails, and running to the right, you run into a more realistic looking fox. The fox asks for your help as the game fades to black. I really liked this game. The concept was really unique, and the story was interesting. Now, the story didn't really tie into the scary parts until the end, but it was still something new. Nothing really overtly bad to say about it. No excessive gore, no cheap jump scares, not a lot of EXE game tropes present in this one. It was just a solid creepypasta game. 7 Iced Out Eggmans out of 10. So those were just a few Sonic Horror games I decided to talk about. There were a few more that didn't make the cut for this video, such as Sonic EXE One More Round, which is a new take on the original Sonic EXE game, which also has two games with almost identical titles that made me accidentally play both of those games. There was also Executable Education, which was a really cool 3D Sonic horror game that introduced elements from Sonic Schoolhouse, which if you're a fan of the channel, you know I love that dumbass game. Once again, let me know if you want to hear about these games more in the future. I have a complicated relationship with creepypasta or EXE games, especially Sonic ones. I feel like I like them a lot more than other people do. It's kind of a guilty pleasure for me. Honestly, it's probably because I grew up watching channels like Luigi Kid, Some Ordinary Gamers, and Risk Grim, and it's kind of a nostalgia 
nostalgia thing, but I don't know. They just have a soft spot in my heart. I know they aren't amazing horror experiences, but they're fun, damn it. Also, huge shout out to Luigi Kid. If you didn't notice, most of these games were made for his challenges, and although these aren't super well liked by the horror game community, it is awesome that he's helping this more niche community of horror thrive. Also, Luigi Kid, if you're watching this, I entered your Wii U giveaway like eight years ago, and I'm praying you never saw these photos I sent in. Sonic has had a rocky relationship with horror games, and that's why I called Sonic EXE himself over here to help clear the air about things. Surely that was a good idea. Okay, maybe it wasn't.